This video will discuss Slater determinants as a systematic way of writing anti-symmetric wave functions. So I noted in the video on Hartree products that a Hartree product has a problem that it doesn't satisfy the anti-symmetry principle, where if we pick any two electrons in a many electron wave function and we swap the labels of the two of them, like electron i and electron j, for any of the values between 1 and n, the number of electrons, where i and j aren't equal, then what should happen is, once I've swapped those two, the entire wave function should be exactly the same, except for the sign, which is now switched. So we looked at the previous video of ways to do this, where we can you know, generate all the permutations of all these electrons, and then uh, switch the sign whenever we swap two pairs of electrons. But that gets very difficult to write very quickly, and there's an exponentially large number of terms. So a way we can indicate that very quickly is to use a Slater determinant. So for the two electron example, what we can do is say this, the wave function of two electrons, x1 and x2, where x1 is the xyz and spin coordinate of electron 1, xyz spin of electron 2, would be the normalization constant 1 over the square root of 2. And then we have the determinant of a matrix where we have all of the rows being individual electronic coordinates and all of the columns being individual spin orbitals. So the labels chi1, chi2 uh, are going to change based on the column. The labels uh, x1 and x2, the electron coordinates are going to change by the row. So that's, in the, that's summarized in what I said there. So formalizing this to an arbitrary number of electrons, we would get a matrix which is psi 1, 2, all the way up to n. So often, we don't e we're don't even so lazy, we don't like writing out explicitly x1, x2. We like just writing out 1, 2, to n, uh, indicating from the context that we mean all the coordinates of electron 1, all of the coordinates of electron 2, etc. Where we have the normalization constant for 1 over, n fa 1 over square root of n factorial, n factorial being the number of permutations or the different ways you can arrange the labels 1, 2, all the way to n, where we have a column, columns of spin orbitals, as I mentioned, and rows of electrons going from 1 to n in each case. So if there are, and a nice feature about this, you'll notice, is that it all automatically enforces the Pauli exclusion principle that we know from general chemistry, that you can't have two electrons with the same spin in the same orbital. So if that happens, if two electrons are in the same orbital, what's going to happen is that um, you'll have two of these rows or two of these columns being the same if two of these spin orbitals are the same. And in any determinant, if two of the columns are the same, then the entire determinant goes to zero. So the wave function goes to zero and the wave function disappears if you have two electrons in the same spin orbital. And if any two spin orbitals are the same, that, that, goes, uh, that is going to disappear as well. So that's a nice property of determinants that if any two rows or if any two columns are equal, that the entire determinant is going to be equal to zero. So this means that the overlap of two different electronic wave functions is going to end up being one if all of the orbitals are the same and it's or it's going to be one if the set of all orbitals in those uh, d determinants are the same and zero otherwise. So in order for there to be a non-zero overlap between two electronic wave functions, all of the orbitals there have to be the same, otherwise the result is going to be zero. So that's the intro to Slater determinants, which is going to be our default wave function for Hartree-Fock theory moving forward and is also going to be the basis for all the uh, corrections on top of Hartree-Fock theory as we move forward in chapters that go beyond that.